I wasn't really in the community, especially while I was using the opiates, Percocet specifically. I had gotten so deep with them, I could just feel the stares on me when I was using. And uh, I kind of I kind of lost it for a while with the culture. Gabe Stewart lives on a small island reservation with 800 other members of the Penobscot Nation in the heart of Maine, a state hit hard by the opioid crisis. All rise. He spent the last year and a half in a special tribal court program that takes an unconventional approach to helping criminal drug offenders overcome addiction. Good morning. We're on record in the Penobscot Nation Wellness Court. The Healing to Wellness Court is different from other drug courts. It was designed to meet the unique needs of the Penobscot Nation, which, like many Native American communities, struggles with issues related to substance abuse. Most of the major crimes that are committed on the reserve involve substance use or abuse. As with other drug courts, the Wellness Court gives offenders a path to having their charges dismissed, but it places special emphasis on reintegrating addicts back into their community by including them in Penobscot cultural practices and traditions. When I first came in, we were wrestling with an Anglo-style court. People sat two tables, prosecutor sat at a table, public defender sat at a table. That's not relevant to the community. The circle is relevant to the community. We took the tables out, moved them aside, and had individuals sit in a circle. We started to include the participants speaking, and as you see, they have some of the most amazing insights to offer. With every bump in the road that you've hit, your attitude has just been like, perfect. If my attitude was just half as good as yours when I came in, I probably still wouldn't be here. <laughs> I definitely still wouldn't be here. I'm so proud of you, and, and anytime you need anything, just ask, because we want to see you succeed. One of the ideas I had was to add the cultural and historic uh, program. We've done basket making, sweetgrass picking, we host sweats. Last night we had a sweat lodge ceremony. Good to see you. You too. I don't know if it was the heat mixed with like the drumming. I don't know why, but the drum, it just connects with me. I can feel it no matter how far away from it I am. By doing things in the community, people see somebody actively engaged. And it kind of changes the perception that, you know, people can change. While the opioid crisis has ravaged the country, rural indigenous communities have been hit the hardest. Between 1999 and 2015, overdose deaths for rural Native Americans have increased more than 500 percent, compared to a 211 percent increase nationally. We all know that there's trauma underlying why this is happening and why these behaviors are coming out. There's historical and there's personal. I went from using maybe once or twice throughout the week to roughly every day, which became multiple times a day. I had to turn somewhere for money that I didn't have. My grandparents, I was actually pretty much stealing most of what I stole from them. They decided that enough was enough and that they needed to press charges. When people are struggling with addiction, they have these crimes, there's this perception within the community of not maybe being welcomed or part of it, and nobody should have to feel like that. More than 100 wellness courts operate in tribes across 26 states that use Native practices to help people with addiction make a cultural recovery, which can be more effective than traditional treatment alone. In the Penobscot Court, if a participant successfully completes the intensive program, their criminal cases are dismissed. When Gabe first came in, he was one of those individuals who wore the hoodie up, head down. I go, please remove your hood. Oh, I'm not. And, and there'd be times where he wouldn't even speak. I just, I pushed back definitely with the meetings with them. That was one of my biggest problems. So like their support and their acceptance of all the stuff that I was going through and the fact that no matter how pissed off I got at them, they still stayed by my side. I haven't had a lot of that in my life. Individuals who are in the throes of addiction often feel alienated. The community doesn't want them anymore. As they start to rebuild that community, individuals start to feel like they belong again. As his mother of all the accomplishments I've seen him go through, this is my proudest moment. It makes me so happy to see that you've stepped back up into your place in the community. You didn't go backwards, you're going forward, and I'm very proud. At Penobscot, we've been running this program for five years. We've only had one person end up back in jail. Now, we've had some people fail out, but if they complete this program, they're not likely to end up back in jail. 
I think we have one thing we have to do from a legal perspective. Your Honor, uh, the nation at this time would like to file a motion, a written motion to dismiss the charges against Kate. Court withdraws a guilty plea. So is there any objection to the motion to dismiss? No objection. <laughs> the matters are all dismissed, and it gives me great pleasure to do so. Congratulations. Everybody in the community can see the difference in me. I feel like I'm a part of the whole, not so much just alone in the world.